seven men who will rule China. This week, the Chinese Communist Party selected a new Politburo Standing Committee. These seven people have ultimate power over the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government. Today, we'll look at who they are and what this will mean for China. Well, of course, this all started when the Chinese people cast their ballots and elected a new group of leaders. And by the Chinese people, I mean, of course, the Communist Party delegates. And by elected, I mean, well, you get the idea. But sure enough, the new Politburo Standing Committee emerged on stage on November 15th in the pre-selected order. Xi Jinping, Li Keqiang, Zhang Dejiang, Yu Zhengsheng, Liu Yunshan, Wang Qishan, and Zhang Gaoli. So who are these seven men who are slated to rule the world's biggest country for the next five to ten years? Well, let's start with Xi Jinping. So he's sort of the number one head honcho. He's the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party. That's the number one powerful position. He's also the chairman of the Central Military Commission. And earlier it wasn't clear whether he'd take this position, but he did. And in fact, this is the key pillar of the sort of Communist Party's control over the country, the sort of the also the last fallback in case things go awry for the party. Now, he's also going to be appointed president of the government, in other words, the, the People's Republic of China, in March. And keep in mind here that the party positions are always more powerful than the state positions. The party positions here are in the light red, and the state positions or government positions are in light blue. Interestingly, when he or former leaders go to the West to visit, they call him Mr. President, but when Xi Jinping or Hu Jintao you know, go to countries like uh, North Korea or Vietnam or Cuba, they'll be addressed as General Secretary, but it doesn't sound so good in the West, so they use the much lower state title, a state title that actually has almost no power. It's mainly a ceremonial position. So what was he before? He was the Vice Chairman of the Central Military Commission, the first Secretary of the CCP Secretariat, which basically is a role that uh, controls some of the administrative duties and personnel within the Politburo and the Central Committee. And of course, he was also vice president, um, and he will be replaced, uh, become president in 2013. The number two guy is Li Keqiang, and he's basically going to be appointed the premier of the state council in March, and that's one of the top two government positions, basically controls the administration in the different uh, departments and organizations within the government. His key former roles, uh, he was the Deputy Party Secretary of the State Council, and he was also the first Vice Premier of the State Council. So those are sort of two sides of the same thing. The Vice Premier is the government position, the Deputy Party Secretary is the party position that ultimately controls that position. A lot of times one person will play two roles at the same level, one party in one state. Now the number three guy is Zhang Dejiang, and so not only is he number three in the standing committee, he's also going to be appointed chairman of the National People's Congress in March, and that's the other key government position. So the, the National People's Congress does legislation. They are a rubber stamp Congress in the sense that they basically do whatever the Communist Party tells them to do, but uh, as in this position he'll have some authority over how legislation gets drafted, although on the big picture stuff, he won't necessarily be able to make a decision himself. So his key former role was the uh, being the party secretary of Chongqing. And he was only there as a replacement for Bo Xilai after he got kicked out. He was also the third vice premier of the state council uh, for the last five years. Now, an interesting uh, tidbit about Zhang Dejiang is he actually had once supervised the provincial 610 offices in labor camps in China. The 610 office was set up 13 years ago to suppress the Falun Gong spiritual movement. And Zhang Dejiang sort of got promoted by Zhang Zemin, who was the former leader for, for uh, his role in that and rose to the top because of that. He's actually been sued uh, by Falun Gong practitioners in Australia, a civil lawsuit that is. The number four guy, Yu Zhengsheng. So besides being in the Politburo Standing Committee, he's also going to possibly be the head of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. His key former role is the party secretary of Shanghai, which he did for the last several years. An interesting thing about Yu Zhengsheng is that uh, his, he was once the assistant to Deng Xiaoping's son, Deng Pufang, uh, and that's kind of how he maintained and, and rose in power. 
Actually, in the, in the mid-80s, in 1985, his brother defected to the United States and exposed a, a Chinese spy who'd been embedded in the U.S. This was hugely embarrassing for the Chinese Communist Party and also very dangerous for Yu Zhengsheng because of his brother. Uh, but because of his connection with the Deng family, he was able to sort of, uh, sort of get back on his feet eventually and rise through the ranks. Liu Yunshan. Now, this is really, besides being number five in the Politburo Standing Committee, he is the propaganda guy. Uh, of course, the propaganda department, uh, technically in English it's now called the publicity department, but it's really the same thing. So he's, uh, his new role is head of propaganda department. He also is kind of taking over from Li Changchun uh, in his role of the Central Committee for Building Spiritual Civilization, which is basically a weird name for the organization that controls the propaganda department as well as the leading group on propaganda and thought work, which are both uh, you know, Communist Party positions. But basically, he's the propaganda guy. That's how you can think of him. He's also the first secretary of the CCP Secretariat, sort of taking over Xi Jinping's former administrative role there. His key former role was also the propaganda guy. So he's been in this position for a long time. And one of the things that really helped him uh, maintain his power is he really supported Jiang Zemin's suppression of Falun Gong inside China and outside of China. He, he really led the uh, anti-Falun Gong propaganda campaign. Wang Qishan, now this is sort of unusual. He's the number six guy in the Politburo Standing Committee, and he's going to be head, he's now head of the Central Discipline Inspection Committee. So this is basically the party's own internal sort of justice system. If a party member uh, breaches discipline or does something wrong, he doesn't go to court. He doesn't go to the civilian court. Uh, in the beginning. He goes through the party's Central Discipline Inspection Committee and they decide uh, what he's done and whether he should be kicked out of the party or whether he should have a civil trial. Um, so basically, in some ways it's like a military tribunal, but instead of following a set of predefined rules, it's basically a political decision-making process every time. And they really don't crack down that hard. For example, only about 3% of Communist Party officials who end up uh, being accused of malfeasance end up going to jail. That's only 3%. So it's, they don't do a whole lot. It's mainly political decision-making about using this sort of discipline as a way to get rid of people or, uh, of course, uh, clear the way for others to rise up the ranks. But it does serve a very, very important role in terms of personnel in the Chinese Communist Party, although it's not all that good at cracking down on real corruption. Uh, his key former role was the fourth vice premier of the state council, He's also really the economics guy. Uh, he was kind of considered the, uh, he was like Timothy Geithner's counterpart in China, so to speak. He sort of jokingly considered himself Geithner's uncle. Now, it's kind of strange that a guy with such a strong economics background, I mean, he uh, was in charge of China Construction Bank in the 90s. He helped uh, lead China out of this major bankruptcy in, in the late 90s. Uh, he's really been involved in the economic side for a long time. So, how does someone like this end up going from a very, very strong economics role to being the head of the Central Discipline Inspection Committee, which is purely political? It really has a lot to do with Li Keqiang. See, Wang Qishan is ranked lower than Li Keqiang, but has more economic experience. So, But Li Keqiang, as the new premier of the state council, really should be the number one guy and doesn't want a guy like Wang kind of stepping on his toes and telling him what to do. But with such a strong economics background, it'd be hard to stop him unless they move him to something completely different, which is what they did. They moved Wong to the Central Discipline Inspection Committee, and that's going to clear the way for Li Keqiang to really be the head on the economic front, kind of like what Wen Jiabao had been doing for the last 10 years. And the last guy, Zhang Gaoli, he's sort of the thinnest, not just in terms of physical girth, but also in terms of his positions. He's the number seven guy in the Politburo Standing Committee, but we don't really know what else he's going to do. It hasn't been announced. Uh, and his key former role, he was the party secretary of Chen Jin uh, for the last five years. But that's about it. We don't really know that much about uh, what he's going to do in the Communist Party. But we do know that he's been pretty close to Zhang Zemin uh, and sort of promoted by Zhang. Uh, has not been considered all that capable or really all that loyal. But... Uh, for whatever reason, they felt like he'd be a good fit to sort of round out the Politburo Standing Committee 
partly to block other people who may be stronger but uh, in different factions from getting on that committee, people like Wang Yang who didn't make it on, for example. Now, let's talk about some notable changes uh, that we've seen with this current 18th Party Congress uh, pull up your standing committee versus the previous one. So one is Hu Jintao is actually retiring. I mean, there was some speculation uh, that he was going to maintain control of the Central Military Commission, just like his predecessor, Jiang Zemin, did in 2002, but he ultimately decided not to and gave control of that to Xi Jinping. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, a lot of it has to do with he didn't really have the power to do it. He may also not want the sort of historical responsibility of being tied to the party if something goes wrong. So he seems to be stepping aside. But keep in mind that at the beginning of the 18th Party Congress, he basically laid out a five-year plan that Xi Jinping and his uh, group is going to have to follow. So he still has a lot of pull. He's just basically in official retirement. Um, he's also going to step down as the president of the People's Republic of China in March 2013. Another notable change is a smaller pull-up bureau. There's only seven people. It was uh, been reduced from nine members back down to seven. It was seven uh, during Jiang Zemin's time, but it hasn't historically always been seven. It's been some years five, some years uh, eight, some years even up to 11 during the early Cultural Revolution. So it's been up and down. You know, seven isn't a, a number that it has to be. It just turned out that this was what they all basically agreed on. Uh, and, you know, in theory, it's sort of a, a, a leaner, meaner group that can make decisions more quickly. Uh, but, of course, there are other factors that may prevent them from making decisions quickly. Uh, another notable change is the PLAC gets weaker. The PLAC has been translated in a bunch of ways. Uh, we've called it mainly the Political and Legislative Affairs Committee. Some people also call it by these other names. Basically, uh, this is a very, very powerful committee. It oversees all the domestic police who have a bigger budget than the national defense. Uh, they oversees the courts, the national intelligence, uh, the justice ministry, and the National People's Congress. And this has actually had become a really, really huge problem. It was set up this way intentionally by Jiang Zemin to help him maintain power. Uh, it really actually formed a second power center in the Politburo Standing Committee uh, for the last 10 years under Luo Gan and then later Zhou Yong Khan. And so uh, this was so powerful, it really made it very difficult for Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao to accomplish stuff because they were always being sort of subverted by this extremely powerful group that controls all these things. But now it's been demoted, basically one level down just to the Politburo level. Meng Jianju is really sort of, was the number three guy to Zhou Yong Khan. The number two guy was Bo Xilai, and Bo Xilai is out of the picture. So with Bo out of the picture, there was no one on the pull-up bureau standing committee to take up this PLAC role. And so the only person who could really do it was Meng Jianju, but he wasn't capable enough, and he was not high enough ranked to be on the standing committee. So basically the whole PLAC gets pushed down one level to that 25-member pull-up bureau. So it also means that there isn't going to be that second power center within the Communist Party uh, pull up your standing committee. And that is a huge difference. In theory, that also means that the, the standing committee is going to be able to work better together, uh, but that may or may not be the case for other factors. Now, we talked in the past about this factional struggle between Jiang Zemin's faction and Hu Jintao's faction. If we sort of put them on a fulcrum here and talk about, you know, where is the balance of power tipping, I would say it seems to have tipped actually in Jiang Zemin's favor. Uh, not completely. Uh, but basically, Zhang's people, for sure, Liu Yunshan and Zhang Dejiang are both strongly uh, in Zhang Zemin's group. And they're also people who rose to power through helping Zhang suppress Falun Gong. So they're very much in his faction. Uh, and they sort of have the same blood on their hands as Zhang Zemin did. So that's why they're so loyal. Uh, but of course, other people also have sided with Zhang or have been uh, helped along their career paths by Zhang, including Yu Zhengsheng, who's third from the left and Zhang Gaoli. Now, Xi Jinping, in the past, uh, I think everyone had put him in Jiang Zemin's faction, but he's not really so much on that side anymore. Uh, he hasn't been involved in some of the worst stuff that Zhang and his people did, uh, and he's more of a compromise candidate between the two factions, and that's kind of why he ended up at the top, because 
it kind of rocks the boat the least uh, to have him there at the top, someone who's right in the middle. And, you know, he did go after Bo Xilai eventually after he heard the rumor of the, the potential coup that Bo wanted to basically um, have a coup against him. So that really sort of flipped his allegiance as well. And then on the right, uh, we've got the economist turned discipline inspection committee guy, Wang Shi Shan, who uh, I won't say he's totally in, John, in Hu Jintao's faction, but he's, he's basically uh, an economic reformer. I don't think any of these seven guys are political reformers. Uh, no, no political reformers made it onto the standing committee. Uh, but some of them are, are more siding with Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao, I think, on some issues, especially the economic issues. So that's Wang Shishan, and then all the way to the right is Li Keqiang. Hu Jintao actually wanted Li to be the general secretary, but ultimately uh, it became very difficult, uh, in part because Li Keqiang had uh, talked in the past, uh, not recently, but, but maybe uh, five years ago or more, um, he'd said some things about maybe having a separation of powers and the government, uh, and that really just doesn't fly with uh, the sort of hardliners in the Communist Party with, with Zhang's faction. So ultimately, Li Keqiang got number two, uh, and Xi Jinping is right in the middle. But it's a little bit weighted towards Jiang Zemin, but you know, all things considered, uh, basically, in some ways, even though Jiang's faction appeared to have won, ultimately I think nobody won, because you've got this widespread of different views for how to move China forward economically, uh, and no one's that interested in moving it forward politically. So, honestly, I think the prospects for China's new leadership is more likely than not they're going to be stuck in the status quo.